Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger. On October 31st, 2023, Happy Halloween. Hopefully, no one run into any zombies tonight and have to put their tactical skills to use. No uh, machetes and nunchucks and swords and katana, whatever. Stay safe out there. Whatever you do, stay safe, right? So, today we're going to do a kind of a short-ish uh, episode. But, and this is uh, something that we have spoken to and demonstrated before. But it is such an important part of uh, martial art that if you understand this principle, it will help you out immensely, especially in areas where you have to grapple, might have to deal with a bigger person, such as in Judo, Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido, Hapkido, all kind of stuff, right? But this is not, strictly speaking, not just limited to grappling and sports. Understand the principle uh, of how to move someone uh, or something heavier than yourself is vitally important in self-defense. One of the biggest, most common issue we come across in self-defense is, well, when someone like me teaching self-defense and making things seem easy, it doesn't mean a lot to some people, right? Like if you are, some of our students, let's say if you are 90 pound female, 4 foot 11. When I tell you you can do this technique to get past the person's guard or get out of their grip, in your mind you're thinking, well, you're like 200 pounds. Obviously that's easy for you. How about me? And that is a very valid question. Because a lot of times there are many, many techniques that work for big people and they don't work for small people. But the principle, not technique, but the principle I'm going to show you today will allow you to be able to move a lot more weight uh, with relative ease. We've demonstrated, Kitten and I have demonstrated this one uh, on the, uh, uh, I think, um, there was a, a video that called like, uh, feel the, star, the, the power of the dark side or something like that. And I sort of demonstrated this, uh, 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 Jedi force when moving a person with just one finger, right? You guys, some of you have seen that before. That's what we're talking about. In ancient China, there has long been a say in the martial arts circle that says, if applied properly, four arms of force can move a thousand pounds. Now, many people mistakenly say, well, see, four ounces of force can move a thousand pounds. That means size doesn't matter in a fight. The small guy can beat a bigger guy if you know what you're doing. Well, yes and no. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble, but if the four ounces of pressure is applied by someone who know what they're doing, and the 1,000 pound of force, or, or 1,000 pound of weight, is someone who doesn't know what they're doing, then yes, size probably doesn't matter as much in this case. But if the 4 ounce of force meet a 1,000 pound of weight, who sort of know what they're doing, then suddenly it becomes immensely difficult. Okay, so don't get it in your head that because you know this dough or that dough or whatever can you know, uh, because you, you can go up against someone three or four hundred pounds with your 90 pound self. Let's just hope we never have to find out, right? Because you never know. This 1,000 pound of force, this 1,000 pound of weight you are trying to deal with, might be 
just as good as you are. In which case, you are totally screwed. Okay. So I just want to preface this with that because this is not a uh, one technique and at all, one principle and at all. I don't want people to say, oh, see, this is a proof that a small guy can beat bigger guy. Size doesn't matter. Size absolutely matter in a fight, in sports, in anything. Okay, size definitely matter. Especially when the person with a bigger size have some knowledge of what they're doing, then it matters a lot. Back to what we're talking about. A lot of people say, wow, okay, you just like, to totally preambled this uh, for a long time. What are you talking about exactly? Okay, let me uh, demonstrate this. Without a partner, this is a little bit hokey, obviously, because this usually works a lot better with another person. But let's hope I can make you guys understand this. I'm sticking out my left arm. I'm putting my life down in front of me, I'm clenching my fist and keeping this arm as stiff as possible, okay? It's stiff as a log, right? This is like, yeah, wow, I'm like totally impressed by my own arm, right? Like this is solid, solid shit, right? I'm holding this here, I'm going to take my right hand and use my finger, I'm going to use my thumb, right? Uh, just because I don't want to, because the angle is so weird, I don't want to uh, hurt my the joint on my index finger. So I'm going to use my thumb. Right? I'm going to use my right hand and use my thumb and try to move my left arm with nothing but my thumb. Right? I'm not jabbing in and pushing with my arm like that. Okay? I mean, I can if I wanted to, but still, it's not going to move. It's a thumb against the entire left arm, right? Yeah, that's science right there. Thumb against left arm. Left arm's not going to move, right? Now, if some of you are thinking this is hokey as hell, you are doing it to yourself, so obviously um, you know when to let go and when to move and when not to move. I agree. <laughs> I agree, and that is the... That is the limitation I have right now because I don't have someone here to help me do this. But I would invite you guys to get someone around you, someone in your family, someone with your friend. The bigger, the better. Okay? Just say something like, "Hey, George, I want. I saw this on YouTube. I saw Johnny Tiger do this. Uh, can you help me? Like, I, I want to see if I can do it. Okay? You, tell, you say, "Hey, George, just uh, like stand there, super solid, and uh, hold your arm out." And don't let me move your arm, no matter what, right? Just hold it still, that's all. Don't let me move it. And then you apply what I'm going to show you today. And I guarantee you, George's arm will move. And I guarantee you that. I don't care how big George is, that arm's going to move. And no, we're not going to do any pressure point, cool pressure point, or pinching, or tickling, or that, all that stuff. I mean, all that stuff is valid, but... If you learn what I'm going to teach you today, then you don't need any of that. And this doesn't just translate to arm either. You know, once you understand this principle, you can move body, you can move head, you can move leg, right? Once you know how this works. So what is it? Okay, let's go back to arm, my left arm sticking out in front of me. Solid as a rock. Right hand, I got my thumb coming in from the side, try to move this arm, try to move my left arm with my thumb. Nah, it's just not going to happen, right? Now, if I come out to the knuckle and try to move it here, then it's slightly easier, but still, not going to, it's not going to move, right? Because it's my whole left arm muscle against my poor little thumb on my right hand. But watch this. What happens if I apply my thumb, start pushing, and then shift downward? Or if I start pushing and move up, right? That arm moves. That arm is going to move. 
Okay, and this is a very simple, simple body mechanic. Um, when most people, I don't know, maybe there's some kind of freaks out there that might be an ex exception. I've never come across one, but that's not to say they're not out there. But for most people, if our body is focused on stabilizing left and right, it's going to be weak up and down. If our body is busy, our brain is busy thinking, I need to stabilize front and back, then we are going to be weak, left and right. So that's all we are doing here, okay? Four ounces of force moving 1,000 pounds means you change direction, okay? One thumb against the entire arm. We can't push this, but we can push and redirect. We can push and redirect, and push and redirect, push and redirect, right? Now, that is one way to uh, move a target that refused to move, uh, especially a person's fist, a person's leg, someone who you are trying to throw or move, right? That's not it. That's not, that's not all. I'm going to show you guys the second similar, and again, we have talked about this before, with second similar principle that work off the same uh, same uh, foundation. Again, left arm sticking out there, nice and solid. Right hand come around with the thumb. I'm going to push. I'm going to redirect, I'm going to push, I'm going to pull, I'm going to redirect. Okay, let's say this person is, is that good, and they react to every time I change direction. Some people are that good, right? No problem. In this case, all I have to do is like that. What am I doing? What am I doing? I am traveling my thumb around the arm, applying pressure in a circular motion. A lot of you that do Aikido, this instantly, uh, you will be thinking, oh, this is why we do the big circular motion in Aikido. Exactly. Because when you apply the force in a circular fashion, there's just no way for the person to counter that. There's no way for the person to stabilize against that, right? So anytime you come across an immovable object like someone's fist or someone what you're trying to grapple, don't just stand there and try to push and pull, right? Add a little circular motion and down they go. You learn your judo, you learn your aikido, you know this very, very well. Circular motion means no blocking it, right? And this is true in striking as well. So, to recap, you either redirect or when you want to move something that even with redirecting, you're not fast enough to beat them and that they react to it and you can't redirect then you do a circular motion. Do a circular motion, and you will be able to move them, no problem. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Don't forget, if you have big George around you, you have some big friend, uh, if you have some unbeliever that think Johnny Tiger is full of it, then go ahead and try it. And I would be interested if you leave the results in the comment section. This video is sponsored by a good friend from uh, Hidden Corner Find. If you're looking for some Christmas goodies, uh, gifts, of retro stuff, and antique and action figures, uh, magazines, and stuff like that, hit up Hidden Corner Find. I'll leave them in the uh, description part of the video.